Well, good morning, everybody on Facebook land. We're here at worship uh, this morning here at First Presbyterian Church. Uh, I'm going to invite Diana to, to start off worship with the prelude. Let us worship God together. Thank you, Sam. Thank you, Sam. So, one of the things that um, it, it, we're, the, we're still trying to figure out all the issues uh, with doing it online. Uh, people can't hear me when I'm talking with my mask on. It's an issue for both people here and on the Facebook. So when I'm up at the pulpit speaking, I'm going to leave my mask off when I'm out of the pulpit, if I'm sitting down or uh, moving down, I'll have my mask back on, all right? But that's, that's why we're kind of keeping people even further away from the pulpit uh, so that people can hear me, right? That's what we want. Uh, we want people to be able to hear uh, what's going on. So uh, that's the plan for right now, and we'll talk, and we're always kind of constantly adjusting things as uh, we, we're uh, going along, all right? Um, some announcements this morning. Uh, you all have been pretty good about bringing food for the food pantry throughout the last couple weeks, and thank you. Uh, today is the, uh, uh, if you remember before COVID, the last Sunday of the month was the food pantry Sunday. Uh, and we'll keep the grocery cart. It's in the Christian ed, uh, the, the fellowship hall there as you come in. I wanna thank everybody who's donated food and I will take it to the food pantry this week. So thank you, uh, thank you. But uh, if you want, you don't have to wait till the last Sunday of the month, uh, but that's the, that, that week is when I'm gonna count the food and take it over to the food pantry, all right? Uh, so thank you to everybody who's donated. I know that they, they can use it, that their pantries or the pantry's getting bare between uses because there's a lot more need uh, in our community right now. 
I have a few music related announcements. I want to start getting some recordings of people singing. Uh, if you are interested in singing, uh, thankfully the, the music videos I've been using the last couple weeks uh, the, uh, during worship, uh, thankfully were recorded back in 2012, 2013. Uh, I want to update some of it because very soon, in the next month or two, I'm going to be using all, I, I will have used all the videos uh, from worship, so it would be good to have some new ones. So if you are interested in recording a video of, uh, of your singing, uh, you don't have to come in and I don't have to record the video. You can record it at home and send it to me. Um, or you can let me know and Di you and Diana and I can get together uh, during the week and record something. Uh, if you are interested, please let me know. I want to get those started scheduling soon. Uh, so we can have more. Uh, and if you want to do it as a... Uh, individual, you know, of course, if you're if you're going to sing with somebody else, you have to social distance. That's that's our rules with the church, uh, so we can get that figured out too. Um, also, Beth Martin is wanting. Uh, she wanted to make sure I announced this morning that they are going to. She wants to get the uh, bell choir going, and they're going to. She wants to make use of the sanctuary uh, so that they're all six feet apart. Uh, social distancing. So uh, if you're interested or have the kids interested in helping out with the, the bell choir, maybe, you know, s standing all along the sanctuary walls might be one option because there's not much room up here. But if we could spread it out, and I think it might be beautiful to have the bell choir uh, stationed around the sanctuary. Uh, so if you're interested in that, um, let Beth know and she's going to set up a rehearsal time. All ages are welcome uh, to participate. Uh, um, so yes, and social distancing and masks obviously will be a part of that as well. Beth has also asked me to remind everybody she's putting together blessing bags, which are those uh, bags for homeless uh, persons. If you're out driving and you see somebody who's homeless and you think they could use some snacks, maybe some hygiene uh, products, hand sanitizer masks or important and good at this time. Um, those kind of items, shampoo, you know, soap, uh, uh, travel size, obviously. Uh, if you could bring those in, if you have, like, if you're like me, you have a stash in one of your drawers. Uh, whenever I stay at a hotel, I end up throwing in the extra bottles and taking it home. I don't know why. I just do. Uh, so if you're like me and you have a stash at home, you can bring in some of those. Um, uh, Beth will be putting those together for people to, to take with them. Uh, make sure nothing that melts, obviously, chocolate bars, stuff like that. Uh, uh, nothing that needs to be uh, refrigerated. Uh, thank you. Um, also, I want to thank everybody who continues to bring in their tithes and offerings or send them into. Uh, um, Mickey, that has helped us in this COVID time uh, to continue to be able to pay the lights and get the, the light repaired. Uh, thanks for Kathy for getting that arranged with H&H. &H. Uh, and it looks good this week. That light was blinking last week. Um, but those kind of things, it's, it's helped us to be able to continue to operate and to, to get thing done, things done. So thank you for your support during this time. If you want... Um, Somebody's going to pick up the offerings today to make sure it gets to Mickey. Kathy's going to do that. But you can also mail it to Mickey. Uh, and I know Brady has it on his computer if you need the address later. But it's 516 Idlewild Court. Uh, but I know it's in the announcement section. On, uh, uh, That's what it is. Yeah, 516 Idlewild Court. But if you need it and you didn't write it down, I, know, I was just saying I know he has it. Um, and I have it as well. Also, if you're on Facebook and watching us today, uh, please feel free to leave a comment. We'll have somebody watching the comment section uh, for prayer requests um, or announcements. Uh, and then throughout the, the worship service, I will check that. Uh, and uh, Liz, I know you were going around getting prayer requests, if there were any this morning. You can let Liz know when your guys are coming in, or, or Michelle, if you guys could just write it down. That way we're not all standing up uh, and projecting and then uh, all of that stuff. So uh, uh, 
but yeah, other than that, I think that's all the announcements I have. Is there any announcements that I missed that are good for the, the church body? Seeing head shaking no. Are we ready then to, to turn our attention to worship this morning? Let us gather together in worship and prayer. Let us pray. Oh God, you call us into your presence this morning. We are thankful for all the ways that your love shows up in our lives. Center our hearts and minds on your love during this time. Remind us of your promise that nothing can separate us from your love. We, rejoin, we join our voices with all of creation shouting your praises. Amen. Amen. And now I invite Brady to pull up just a little talk with Jesus. Uh, this is our choir from a few years ago. Each week we take time during worship to confess our sins before God and each other. We trust and believe that when we confess our sins, our faithful God will forgive us. For God's faithful love and grace is abundant. And let us confess our sins together as I, we, I lead us in prayer, saying, The divine gardener cannot sow seeds of justice and peace where there is nothing but hearts of dry, hard rocks. We confess that our hearts may need tilling, 
and the digging out of the deeply rooted sins that crowd out seedling, seedlings planted with divine compassion. God of steadfast love, you change bitter tears of remorseful hearts with raindrops of mercy. Now let us germinate a new life, growing with integrity. God of steadfast love, you change the cold shame of contrite hearts with sun rays of mercy. Now let us sprout a new life, growing with honesty. God of steadfast love, you change the stony edges of repentant hearts into landscapes of mercy. Now let us branch out into new life, growing with generosity. Hear us now in these moments of silent prayer and confession. Nothing is impossible with God. There is no place you can go, no end of the earth you can run where God cannot find you. There is nothing on earth or beyond death that can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. You are forgiven. Go, uh, you are loved, you are reconciled to God. Go and live with the love of God. Amen. Amen. Our, our first lesson today is from Psalm 105, verses 1 through 11. This is from the Common English Bible. Listen for the word of our Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Call upon his name. Make his deeds known to all people. Sing to God. Sing praises to the Lord. Dwell on all his wondrous works. Give praise to God's holy name. Let the hearts rejoice of all those seeking the Lord. Pursue the Lord in his strength. Seek his face always. Remember the wondrous works he has done, all his marvelous works, and the justice he declared. You are who are the offspring of Abraham, his servant, and the children of Jacob, his chosen ones. The Lord, he is our God. His justice is everywhere throughout the whole world. God remembers his covenant forever. The word he commanded to a thousand generations, which he made with Abraham, the solemn pledge he swore to Isaac. God set it up as binding law for Jacob as an eternal co covenant for Israel, promising, I hereby give you the land of Canaan as your allotted inheritance. This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God. And our, our epistle lesson is from Paul's letter to the Romans. Chapter 8, verses 29 to 39. Listen for the word of our Lord. We know this because God knew them in advance, and God decided in advance that they would be conformed to the image of his Son. That way his Son would be the first of many brothers and sisters. Those who God decided in advance would be conformed to his Son, he also called. Those whom he called, he also made righteous. Those whom he made righteous, he also glorified. So what are we going to say about these things? If God is for us, who is against us? God didn't spare his own son, but gave him up for all, us all. Won't he also freely give us all things with him? Who will bring a charge against God's elect people? It is God who acquits them. Who is going to convict them? It is Christ Jesus who died, even more, who was raised and who also is at God's right side. It is Christ Jesus who also pleads our case for us, who will, separate us, who will separate us from God's love. Will we be separated by trouble or distress or harassment or famine or nakedness or danger or sword? As it is written, we are being put to death all day long for your sake. We are treated like sheep for the slaughter. But in all these things we win a sweeping victory through the one who loved us. I am convinced that nothing can separate us from God's love in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not death or life, not angels or rulers, not present things or future things, not powers or height or depth or any other thing that is created. Amen.
This is the word of our Lord. Thanks be to God, and let us pray. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of our hearts be acceptable and pleasing in your sight. Lord, our rock and our redeemer. Amen. So many of us, I would imagine most of us in here, uh, were alive when uh, the Presbyterian Church reunited back in 1983. Uh, I, I was not. I was not around, around in 1983 when the Northern Church and the Southern Church reunited uh, and we became what now is the Presbyterian Church USA. When that happened, the leaders of both denominations said, since we're coming together, this is an important time in the church, in the history of the church. We're reuniting after 130 years. 40 years of being separated due to the Civil War. So they wanted to create a, a theological statement that they called the Brief Statement of Faith. And that became the mission of our church going forward, this Brief Statement of Faith. The first line begins, in life and in death we belong to God. At the end of the Brief Statement of Faith it says, with believers in every time and place we rejoice in life and that nothing in life nor in death can separate us from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. This brief statement of faith, the mission of the church begins and ends with this promise that nothing can separate us from God's love. We belong to God in life and in death. This is a concept that is prevalent throughout what's called Reformed Christianity, the, the, the movement that we Presbyterians belong to, the theology of John Calvin, that nothing can separate us from God's love. This idea, of course, comes to us from, from today's lesson from Paul's letter to the Roman Christians. This is perhaps contains my favorite line in all of Scripture, if I were to play favorites. Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. Not even death. Nothing. Nothing. Nothing can separate us from the love of God. God loves each of us even when we mess up. God loves each of us even when we feel we don't deserve it. God loves each of us when we're, when things are rotten, no good, terrible, awful. God loves us. Just as God declared to Jesus in his baptism that Jesus is God's beloved child, so too does God declare to you in the name of Jesus Christ that you are a beloved child of God and there ain't nothing you can do about it. Amen. Of course, so often in our lives, there are times when we feel disconnected from God. I know I have. You're human, right? There are times that we're just going to feel disconnected from God. That things go hard, hard, get hard in our lives, or difficult, or or bad, or or whatever, or you just feel disconnected from God in some ways. It's normal. It really is. Even your pastors felt that way. Famine, war, disease, pandemics, political in enmity, family drama. Not that we know anything about any of those things right now, right? Things can make us feel like God has abandoned us or left us to our own devices or, or we're getting some kind of divine punishment. In the Middle Ages, there was this roaming band of monks that would, would self-flagellate where they would just whip themselves as they were walking from town to town because they thought they had to repent because the plague was a punishment of God. Perhaps we don't have roaming bands of monks who, who whip themselves now. But you just have to turn on some televangelists to hear them saying that this is God's divine punishment. This COVID-19, which I don't believe. We, we, we feel like 
maybe we deserve these things or, or that God has left us alone. Sometimes we might even say, there must have been something I did to deserve this, to happen in this, in my life. You won't believe how many times I've heard that question from people in, in just the seven years of my ministry. People feel that God is punishing them or absent from their lives. But here's the thing about today's passage. Paul reminds us that in these moments of difficulty and crud and just plain terribleness, God is with us. And not only is God with us in these moments, but God continues to love us. We are not alone in these times, and I think we need to remind ourselves of that as this this pandemic continues to struggle on. God is present in our lives. I really am struggling with this whole COVID-19 pandemic shutdown stuff. How about you? I know it seems trite or trivial or, or silly. I miss going to the movies. I don't just miss it. I really miss it. I was there three times a week during the summer. After work, I'd go during the week or on the weekend. I might go to a couple uh, shows. I miss being able to give my nieces hugs. A week from tomorrow, if my twin sister hasn't had her babies, a, a week from tomorrow, she's having her babies. <laughs> uh, August 3rd, uh, the doctor said that uh, if she hasn't delivered by a week from tomorrow, uh, they're coming. I want to be up there to see them. I can't go see them. This is hard stuff. This is hard stuff for me. I don't know about you. It's difficult. I know things are really difficult. And I have a house. I have a job. Thanks to, to, to you all who have been faithful in your giving. I haven't had to worry about putting food on my table or or to paying the light bill this month. And I know that's not true for, I, I, I know that there are people who have had to struggle with doing that during this time. I'm worried about the rising ca cases of COVID in our region, in our state, in our country, in the world. I know people who have lost loved ones because of COVID. I'm sad that I can't go to the state fair this year. I've only missed it once before in my life. I'm sad I can't go to Maine this year. <laughs> there are a lot, I, I get it. This is really a difficult time in our lives. The Roman Christians were going through a difficult time in their lives. Not only did they know about pandemics and, and diseases, right? Not, they didn't know how to treat it. They didn't have medicine and, and uh, modern science. They didn't have ventilators back then. But they were oppressed by Rome. They were being killed for their faith. And in the midst of the, all that, of the famine and the disease and the war and, and the oppression, Paul writes to these Roman Christians and says, Nothing can separate you from the love of God in Christ Jesus our Lord. So I want you to hear that today. You are beloved by God. You are God's beloved child. And here's the thing, though. God's love is not just for us in, in these pews here this morning or watching just on Facebook. There's been a temptation in the church throughout the century to say, we have God locked up. Right? We're right, and anybody who, who's not here is wrong. I'm not saying that that's the case here necessarily in this church, but that in the bigger, larger church that has happened. There cannot be an us versus them mentality. This passage seems on the one hand... To, uh, to claim a certain amount of predestination. Did you catch that? 
John Calvin's famous theological statement of predestination came from this passage, mainly. Those whom God decided in advance would be conformed to his Son, uh, he also called, and those who he called, he also made righteous, and those he made righteous, he also glorified. Certainly sounds like God pre-chose certain people, right? This verse has led many to, to people to believe that those who uh, agree with me are the saved ones, the predestined ones. Now that has been a historical issue with the Presbyterian Church. <laughs> In the past, that some are saved, and the rest, those who are not part of the church are, are godless heathens. That some pre are predestined for God's salvation and, and love, and some are not. This is not the time or place, I get it, uh, to delve too deeply into predestination and the Presbyterian's relationship with predestination. I'm not going to get into all that, okay? I saw Tony's eyes already blazing over. <laughs> uh, all right, I'm not going to get too much into predestination this morning. Rather, I bring this up because I think to say that some are outside of God's love is to take this passage out of context. Paul is saying, according to Reverends Eric Fischler and Rob McCoy on their website, Dear Working Preacher, or not Dear Working Preacher, their uh, pulpit fiction, excuse me, their website, Pulp of Fiction. They write, We are predestined for God's love, even in the midst of suffering. Suffering does not pull us from God, but rather should pull us toward God, deeper in relationship with God. I love that sentence. We are predestined for God's love. I love that sentence. God has loved you since before you were created. And there ain't nothing you can do about it. That's how I choose to focus on predestination as your Presbyterian pastor. Life is too short to get up and get caught up into the dangerous and, and often heretical guessing game of who is in and who is out because the short answer is God always errs on the side of love and welcome. There is nothing in life, not even death itself, can separate us from God's love. During this time of great conflict, when people are sick and dying, now is the time for the church to be proclaiming God's love from the rooftop. We have work to do, beloved colleagues. We have ministry to do. Because there are people who need to hear that God loves them and that God is with them in this difficult time. Maybe even you are one of those people who needs to hear that today. So I invite you to write down on a piece of paper, text it to yourself, send yourself an email, do something, write it on the fridge, a note, or stick a note on the fridge. Remind yourself daily that God loves you and there ain't nothing you can do about it. All right? I have a little little plaque uh, in my, actually in my restroom. So when I, the first thing when I'm showering, get up in the morning, it says, all you need is love. And it reminds me, all we need is God's love. God loves you in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Amen. Liz, were there any comments on the Facebook page? All right. If, uh, as I'm going along, uh, we're now to our time. Thanks, Liz has been watching the, the Facebook page for the uh, Comments uh, if there are people with joys and concerns. As we're going along, if you're watching on Facebook uh, and you haven't yet typed it, go ahead and we'll make sure to get that uh, lifted up for joys and concerns. Uh, I have several to lift up this morning uh, from people who reached out to me earlier this week. Continued prayers are needed for uh, Corbin Rutledge, that is Jane and, and uh, Sam's grandson. Um, he is having continued difficulty with with uh, the seizures and the, the, the uh, medical issues he's going, have been going on for the last several months, um, and they're doing more tests. I haven't heard the results of the tests so far, uh, but he's going to need lots of prayers going forward. Corbin is going to be a junior, I believe. Senior. Senior? Junior. Junior. Okay, thank you. Uh, in high school.
high school. So uh, uh, just prayers for Corbin uh, and for Jane and Sam and their, their family. Uh, continued prayers Beth, for Beth Martin's father as he recovers. Uh, he is seeing a neurosurgeon this week. That's where they are this, uh, today is with her dad, uh, her and Melody. So prayers for Beth's father as he continues to recover from his heart. And, uh, man, that light just dent again. Uh, hey. Yeah, right? Did I? I don't know. It's out now. Yeah, it's, uh, we just had them out to fix it. We're going to have to bring them. I don't know. Sorry, that's frustrating. Pray for that light. <laughs> we just had them out. They just took it down and worked on it this week. I don't know. Uh, I don't know. Anyway, pray for Kat because I think she's getting. we're getting frustrated with that light. <laughs> Uh, joking, of course. Uh, continued prayer, prayers. Uh, I talked with Mark Weedy this week. Brad had had a uh, heart attack and a stroke uh, several several weeks ago. I was just checking in. She said that he is recovering well from from uh, all of his trauma uh, and is doing well, which is a, a joy. Uh, um, and then continued prayers for Wanda and Delano. Uh, they're in uh, Courtyard Estates. Uh, right now, uh, and if you need their phone number, let me know. I've got their phone number. Yes. All right, hold on. I'm, I'm sorry, I'm having trouble hearing you, and I'll come right down there. Oh. Yeah. Uh, Wanda and Delano, they're at Courtyard Estates. They're recovering. Wanda had her heart attack. Yeah, uh, they, yeah they're at uh, Courtyard Estates. Uh, uh, had, she had a heart attack. He had hip surgery, and I think they're just recovering from, from all of that right now. Uh, did I see a comment? Prayers for Cozy as she travels to and from Mayo's uh, for uh, all of her uh, tests and stuff. Uh, we'll keep you in our prayers, Cozy. Is there anything else that we missed? This uh, oh, Gisela is home. Uh, thank you for asking. Uh, I talked with Hubert this week. Uh, in fact, she was on the way home when I was talking to Hubert. Um, I told them to give me a call if they needed anything, and I'll try to touch base with them next week. I tried to call uh, Gisela, and they said, oh, she's not there uh, at the hospital. And then I called Hubert, and he said she just left. So I had just missed uh, uh, Gisela. So uh, Pauline just said that uh, she talked with Gisela yesterday, and she's doing okay, uh, which is good. Uh, so, uh, and I, I think their families, a couple of their daughters, are going to be with them for a while, uh, which is good to help out. Um, did I miss any others? Just continue prayers for my twin sister. I have a picture. <laughs> she is very, 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 very pregnant. Uh, 13 and a half pounds of babies. Uh, she's ready. She's like, get these babies out of me. So just, as I said, a week from tomorrow, if, if she hasn't gone into labor, uh, a week from tomorrow, my mom's got her bag packed, ready by the door to jump up and She's going to be watching their two older, their two girls that they have right now. So uh, if they have to go to the hospital, and it, the light just came back on, who knows? Tony was praying that it would come back on, and it just, or he had an idea, uh, maybe right? The, the light bulb came on. No. Uh, all right. If there are no other joys and concerns. Uh, let us take some time. Is there another one on Facebook? All right. Uh, then let us join our, as we pray, uh, let, I will lead us and then uh, we'll have the Lord's Prayer. All right? So let us pray. Good and gracious God, we come to you today, today thankful for, for people worshiping together. We know that we're trying to be safe, Lord, in this time. And it's hard because we're scared. And people are still afraid and 
and people are still getting sick and dying from COVID-19. So we pray that you would be with the doctors and nurses and technicians and scientists and, and uh, assistants and all those who are caring for, for our loved ones in, in, uh, in the hospital right now. Please be with those, uh, those people as they continue to care for them. Give them strength, give them patience, give them energy to get through this, Lord. And Lord, we lift up Corbin uh, Rutledge and all that's going on with him. Uh, please just be with him and guide him and, and give Jane and Sam a sense of peace in this time. Lord, we pray for Beth's father uh, in this time as he continues to recover from all of his, his trauma, of his heart and uh, uh, stroke. Be with him and the neurosurgeon in this week. And we give you thanks that Brad is uh, recovering from his, his heart attack and stroke. So be with him and guide him in this time. And Lord, we pray for Wanda and Delano as they're in Courtyard Estates. Give them a sense of peace and healing as they recover from their traumas. And Lord, please be with Cozy as she travels up to, to the Mayo Clinic this week and travels back. Give her uh, peace, give her wisdom, give her healing, give her the good news she, she needs to hear from her doctors. Lord, we lift up all those joys and concerns and prayers for also Gisela in this time. Uh, she continues to heal. All this we pray in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts, as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and power, and the glory forever. Well, this was the longest worship service we've had since we're back. I'm sorry, I, I know I promised to keep it to 30 to 35 minutes. We went to 40 minutes today, uh, but we had a lot more announcements and prayer concerns today. So uh, we're going to depart, and I'm, I'm going to encourage you to, to let uh, those people who need a little extra time to go down the stairs go first. Um, and then uh, please stay for the, the postlude uh, as well. And now hear this uh, charge and benediction. Depart from this place knowing that you do not walk this journey alone. Jesus offers to walk with you, carrying all those things that weigh you down. Proclaim love and peace to everyone you meet. And as you go into the world, go with the love of Jesus Christ and the grace of God, our Creator, and the power of the Holy Spirit. Go in peace. Amen.